Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Of course, with the season three reloaded update today, we got two brand new weapons in Warzone DMZ and Modern Warfare 2, and each of them are actually fully automatic pistols. We've got the FTAC Siege, AKA the Tech 9, then we also have the GS Magna, which is a fully automatic 50 GS or a Desert Eagle. Two very different weapons, two very different dynamics, and today we are breaking down the best setups for each of them for multiplayer and for Warzone. So four setups that we're going to break down here today. I'm going to start first with the GS Magna because, uh, quite frankly, it's a gimmicky gun. This is in no way a realistic meta option in multiplayer or in Warzone, quite frankly. Uh, even just leveling it up in multiplayer, it's only got 10 levels, so after you unlock it, it's not too bad. By the way, shipment 24-7 is live. You can get both unlock challenges done at the same time if you use Akimbo 50 GSs. You get the hip fire done uh, for the FTAC Siege, and then you also get the headshots done for the Deagle. So pretty straightforward for the unlocks there. Also, you could just have a friend drop one of these guns for you in DMZ if you uh, wanna do it that way too. But regardless, only 10 levels on this thing. It gets unlocked super quick but it's so gimmicky, even when you're leveling it up, it's not something that's even competitive in multiplayer. And if it's not competitive in multiplayer, chances are it's not gonna be that competitive in Warzone because of the increased health. So this setup in particular, first up is for multiplayer specifically. The setups do differ a little tiny bit for the Magna here, uh, but honestly, I feel like you might as well just go akimbo on this thing. Having no akimbo, there is very noticeable recoil. Even if you slow it down and focus just on recoil-based attachments, then it's not even good at close range, and the only usable place uh, you have for it is close range. So I'm going out right akimbo. It just makes the most sense to me. 13-round mag is the max here. It starts off with a, at a stock of 7, which is just not nearly enough. 13 was even pushing it if you run into multiple people at a time. So that's kind of a must-have. With akimbo on there, it definitely helps out a lot. I also got overpressured ammo on here because we can't have a laser for akimbo, unfortunately. So this is just going to induce more flinch, maybe help an enemy miss a couple of more shots because that increased flinch. I tuned for the better velocity and range in this case. I also got the uh, FTAC 50 compensator, just straight up for vertical recoil control. This isn't a huge deal in the areas that you're going to be using this setup in particular, but it's on there to help out a little bit. And then also I go for the long shot barrel. It's going to help out with hip fire accuracy, which is nice, but then also movement speed, which I'd like to gain back some of then some added velocity and range. I tune for the better damage range and steadiness because the other two factors don't matter in our hip fire setup here. But uh, yeah, the multiplayer base setup here really meant for like 10 meters and closer. Not much versatility, not much, uh, you know, meta competition with this one. It's just a mess around gun. And like I said, the setup doesn't change a ton for Warzone. The only real change that I have here, quite frankly, is the muzzle. So we're still going akimbo because I just don't see this being a realistic option as a secondary, as a close range gun just by itself because in order to control it you just have to slow it down way too much and then it's too slow to actually compete with the ads and everything so uh we got a kimbo on there we got the 13 round mag we got overpressured ammo yet again basic same tunes there i go for the 50 gs this is actually a suppressor compensator essentially so you get better control you get better velocity it keeps you off the compass and whatnot so it's there. It's a little bit more effective for Warzone. It's not going to be a huge difference between this and the normal compensator, though. And the tunes here are all kind of irrelevant because of Akimbo. And then we got the long shot on there as well, right? So if we were to go ahead and jump into uh, the gunsmith with this, you see that obviously it's crazy. Like that's too far. That one simple target is too far out. You got to be right next to them to have any kind of chance at killing them. And if you don't have a Kimbo on here, it's just not it. Like we can even go into the uh, to the gunsmith really quick here. If I were to drop a Kimbo and just run this really quick with the 13 round mag, you guys can see pretty slow ADS and it's still kicking like crazy, even when we're focused on control. Not something that's gonna be wildly impactful unless you are a very skilled player, a Kimbo or a single shot. It's a heavy, it's a slow, it's a gimmicky weapon that is more for fun than it is actual competition. Now, as we get on into the Tech 9 setups here, the FTAC Siege setups here, quick reminder, if you guys are new to the channel, every single day, I got you covered with absolutely everything going on in COD. News, updates, patch notes, whatever it may be, or meta conversations like this with the best loadouts and best weapons to be using. Uh, so if you wanna stay up to date with that stuff, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications, and if you guys enjoy this video, if you find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it as well. The Tech 9, much unlike the uh, GS Magna though, 
actually is competitive. It is basically a pocket SMG. It's a fully auto pistol, has plenty of ammo. It starts with the default mag of 24 in multiplayer, which really is totally fine, right? And you can customize this thing a ton. So first up, we've got the multiplayer setup, which really I'm just focused on making it uh, speedy, but still somewhat controllable, right? So I've got the Sir 160 rear grip on here, better ADS and sprint to fire. And I've got tunes to match that as well. I also go for overpressured in this case, might as well add in that extra flinch, right? Can help an enemy miss a couple of more shots, which could be crucial. I go for the velocity and range on the tunes here because smoothness and steadiness isn't really a huge deal. I also got the siege stock as well. This is gonna be for better control primarily. Hurts your mobility some, but we're gaining this back. And I actually tune for better mobility here too. So you're kind of getting some out of that as well. I go for the Diod laser. This is basically just for better ADS and sprint to fire. It's visible, but it's nothing too crazy. Uh, you're not gonna be pre-aiming a ton at this. It's mainly a rush around run and gun type gun. So better ADS and sprint to fire on the tunes as well. Then lastly, just for some more consistency, I go for the uh, pendulum uh, compensator basically here. Better vertical control, better horizontal control. I tune for some of the gun kick, but then also the ADS to keep it nice and snappy. Real quick presentation here in the gunsmith. You can see ADS, very snappy. Sprint to fire is not too bad either. And super easy to use. Plenty of ammo as well for 24 in the ranges that you're going to be using it. Obviously, you're not going to go all the way out. It is Still a pistol, so its range drops off pretty severely, but still very usable and uh, pretty competitive in multiplayer. Then we got the Warzone side of things, where quite frankly, this could be a big time competitor up close. Uh, again, its range is going to drop off so hard that I don't see it being as versatile as some of the subs. Like, I'm probably still picking a Lockman, a Vaznev, a P90, an MP7 over this, but it can hold its own in close range fights especially when you build it out like this to basically make it a full-on SMG just with some of the range lacking there. So I still got the Sir 160 on here for the better ADS and sprint to fire tunes to match that. I also still have the Siege stock on here for the better control, but tunes for the better mobility. Now, in this case, I go for the 72 round drum because why not? Yes, there's 50, but let's go all the way overkill. For what it's worth, if you want to drop down to 50, it'll be a little bit faster. Feel free to do so. But 72, I couldn't pass it up, right? That's so overkill for no reason other than to just have it on there for fun. And quite frankly, for quads and whatnot, it, uh, it, it does work. <laughs> like surprisingly enough, it's going to hold its own. Now, I also go for the RR40 suppressor here, again, just to stay off the compass and whatnot to keep that suppression on there. Also gives you that better range, though, in velocity, which is super clutch. And in this case, I'm tuning for the better velocity in ADS speed. And then lastly, I go for the CMRN50 barrel, which is better velocity, better control. In this case, there are a lot of barrels here. Uh, several of them help out with, uh, you know, movement, but we also got a lot of range-based ones, even some built-in suppressors. I'm not a huge fan of those because those are ultra slow in comparison, but uh, if you want to extend the range a little bit more, you could certainly mess around and see what works well for you. But this setup I felt like was nice and aggressive. You can see in the gunsmith, ADS, a little bit slower than the multiplayer one, but you know, still doable. It's still got good mobility and it's still super, super easy to use. Obviously a lot more effective in the mid range as well because of some of the attachments. And we can just keep shooting and shooting and shooting. And it doesn't really matter because we have all the ammo in the world, right? With that 72 round mag. So definitely gets the job done. Certainly a much more competitive weapon than the Magna, right? So we've got one pretty much irrelevant weapon unless you're trying to mess around one actual competitor in the FTAC siege here. Certainly worth uh, leveling up, dropping in, checking out, seeing how you like it. But that being said, that is effectively going to wrap things up for this one. That is the best class setup and best loadout for the brand new GS Magna in the FTAC siege here in Warzone 2 and MW2. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. If you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications so you can always stay up to date with everything. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.